Hello everyone, my name is Lumi and in this video I will guide you through Drogus' strengths and weaknesses. So stay tuned to learn more. Here we go. Drogus is one of the two most recent additions to the Free Champions Rooster. And his main weapon is a rocket launcher with a 6 rockets charger. Since the rockets deal splash damage, each rocket can deal approximately between 300 and 500 HP of damage, depending on the splash damage's distance to target, with obviously direct hits dealing the most damage. But watch out, splash damage can hurt yourself if you're shooting too close. Meanwhile, the launcher's firing speed seems to be one shot per second, and its reload speed of approximately three seconds is fairly long. Each projectile's traveling speed is also noticeable for lack of better word. It's not really slow, but it surely isn't so fast that people couldn't avoid it, so consider learning how to do proper lead aim. Meanwhile, his secondary attack, aka the right mouse button, is called Expectorate and launches a slow traveling spitball that increases damage dealt to enemies by 30% for 4 seconds. This is if you can land an Expectorate shot, as its slow speed makes it incredibly easy to avoid. Fortunately, this speed can be improved with the proper card, or does the rendered viable fit here better than the verb improve? I don't know, you tell me. Anyway, its cooldown is 10 full seconds, and you can increase its knockback effect as well as add a slowing effect with proper cards. Unfortunately, Expectorate only adds the debuff and doesn't deal any damage upon impact. His main ability is a rocket salvo that loads all the remaining rockets from your charger in your chamber, allowing for your next shot to be a barrage of all the loaded rockets, up to 6 consecutive shots but it will also greatly reduce each projectile's accuracy while having a total of 30 seconds cooldown. Drogo's escape ability is called Thrust, and it basically propels you up in the air with a slight forward motion. It has an 11 seconds cooldown, but multiple cards can improve this cooldown rate in order to keep Drogo's in the air as much as you might need. And here's the kicker. It might not be a dedicated ability, but Drogo's has an added jetpack that no other champion has. It does also work just like you would expect. A simple stamina-like bar determines for how long you can levitate and even slightly rise in the air. It doesn't need to be activated by thrust and it can be used at any time as long as you have the rocket fuel for it, which refills on its own as soon as you stop using it. It can be used for an approximate 3 consecutive seconds and takes about 12 seconds to refill full. Finally, Drogos' ultimate is the only ultimate in the game at the time that acts as an insta-kill. It's called Dragon Punch, and takes 2 full seconds to charge in which the camera switches from 1st person to 3rd person view, and you become, unfortunately, totally vulnerable. You can't move, activate abilities, nor shoot during those 2 seconds, but you can still move the camera to aim your ultimate at the enemy. Then, you get propelled forwards at neck-breaking speeds, and turning becomes really hard whilst being unable to cancel the ability. You will boost forward like that for a total of 3 seconds, which can be improved with the right card, or until you hit your first enemy, which will be instantly killed, no questions asked. Anyway, that's it for Drogus' weapons and abilities. Now, how do you use them right? Drogus has 2000 health points, which puts him in the average health champion group. He's not a tank, nor one of those low health, high damage champions, although he surely can hit hard. His main advantage though is mobility, and you might be thinking, what did I just hear? Yes, mobility. Once you learn to take to the skies with Drogos, you realize he's much more than that slow lizard you see roaming the map. And this realization is key to transform Drogos from a turtle into a fearsome dragon. Due to his many thrust cooldown reducing cards, Drogos can be in the air a lot of time. Use his jackpack to keep him up there and then rain fire down on your enemies. In fact, a good portion of his cards are aimed at giving mobility buffs. A great combo tactic is to load your full magazine in a salvo, rise up, float with the spacebar and unleash a hellfire rain on top of your enemy. Then retreat, reload and realize you have to wait a full 30 seconds before being able to play a godlike creature again. Comedy aside, use this time to train some lead aim. By which I mean aiming at where the enemy will be and not where he is at the moment of your shot. The rockets aren't extremely slow, but still enough that you'll have to work hard for a direct hit. If you have trouble hitting people, aiming at their feet or better yet taking higher up positions to aim downwards will help. Why? 
because since missing shots is so easy with Drogos, having a wall or ground to catch the missed shots and transmit splash damage to the enemy is better than having the shot fly into the distance. Of course nothing beats a direct shot, but if you take your enemy down in the end, who cares how it was achieved? Drogos' spitball, also called Loggy, is a very slow moving projectile, probably the slowest moving projectile in the game right now. Therefore, it is only really useful in close quarters or when you use the proper speed increase in the car. I like to stay at a distance where my rockets can still deal damage, but where I can avoid most of the enemy fire, hence Expectorate never really finds much use for me. But if I don't have it on its cooldown, I will still try and hit with it. Maybe one day I'll get lucky. You too can try it, but your main bet should always be on salvo and your basic rockets. Again, I'm certain that some veterans can possibly do wonders with Expectorate, especially since you can create some very specific decks for it, but as a beginner I really urge you to learn how to use your rockets efficiently first and move on to Expectorate once you have mastered the basics. Finally, Drogus' ultimate is a great way to get rid of a pesky Fernando with Evolve and his over 5000 HP, since it will kill anything regardless of health points, except for Grog when he's escaping in his ghost walk, that's annoying, but it will destroy Fernando's shield and pass right through Barrick's barricade. I don't know though if Eevee's ice cube will survive it, I never encountered the situation, but it might well be possible. In any case, pay attention to the 2 seconds charge up in which you're vulnerable and try to launch it away from the action to end up swooping in for the kill. If you manage it, then be ready to immediately initiate a get the hell out maneuver as you'll most likely end up in the midst of the action with every single enemy left alive shooting at you. If you have no ceiling, it's a great moment to activate your thrusters and fly away to safety. Be aware though that his ultimate comes with a huge shoutout warning the enemy team which makes him usually get out of the way and hence harder to hit. In the end, Drogus is a bit like a fighter jet, you swoop in fast, deal damage and retreat before coming back for another pass, and this is how you should play him. In regards to his decks, Airstrike is great for beginners as it emphasizes on thrust cooldown reduction while giving a nice 15% damage boost after initiating it. The spitballing deck is for people who enjoy using the spitball ability and is probably not something you'll want to use as a beginner. At least, I think the losses made in thrust bonuses is too big of a price to pay for added spitball effects, especially considering the issues with Expectorate's slow movement, which this deck only increases by 50%. If you really want to go for a spitball specific deck, then you'll better be off with the custom one. Finally, the Master Storant deck is a deck that rewards accuracy, all whilst making Salvo more accurate. So if you feel confident you can consistently do direct hits with your rockets, this might be a good pick for you. Otherwise, Airstrike is really your best choice. Anyway, let's move on to our next section. Understandably, Drogos' weaknesses lie in both his lengthy reload and whenever he's on the ground. Engaging Drogos indoors is easiest, because he can't take as much advantage of his thrust ability and escape might prove more difficult for him. Out in the open is where he excels, so try to use the map to your advantage in this regard. Furthermore, having the high ground versus Drogos is always favorable as his rockets will have less surface to contact with when his aim is facing upwards. His rockets and especially his expectorate being slow, you want to keep constantly on the move to force him to bring his best leading aim skills. On top of that, his rocket salvo is deadly, so keep wary when encountering Drogos and be at the ready to use your escape ability to get out of dodge if needed. Once his salvo is over, he'll have a long reload ahead, so make sure to take advantage of that, and if he has no teammates nearby, follow him after he is landed and is waiting for his thrust to cool down. This is when he is most vulnerable, slow and sluggish and less in the air, that's pretty much Drogus' description. Drogus' ultimate ability, albeit deadly, can easily be countered due to his loud shout, THE DRAGON'S FURY! So keep an ear out for that shout, and if it sounds loud, you'll probably be close and it's time for you to get out of the way. Hug the walls and corners or simply prepare to get out with your escape ability. Just try and keep Drogos grounded as much as possible, especially when playing a close quarters champion. With Fernando, wait the salvo out under your shield and dash towards Drogos' landing spot to roast him with your flamethrower as he is reloading. With Buck, you can interrupt his thrust with your net ability, and with Grover, you can try and catch on to him with your vines. 
The best champions against Drogos are all long range champions with fast projectiles, such as Ruckus, Androxus, Cassie, Sky, and Kinesa. Most champions will do fine against Drogos, but every champion needs to catch their optimal moment. Splash damage champions like Pip and Eevee need to wait for him to be grounded in order to be effective, but the others can try to snipe him down when he's up in the air. Close quarters champions might have a tougher time, especially since they'll be more subject to getting expectorate in their faces. But everyone must have their Achilles heel, and Drogus is really strong against close quarter champions. Little can be done about that. If you feel like I missed something, made a mistake, or wasn't quite clear in certain aspects, feel free to comment below and I'll make sure to read your comments and reply to any questions. As always, if you enjoyed the video, press that like button and make sure to subscribe. I'm Lumi, your host, and see you around next time.